guys who are laser focused every day, and I think that that's something that personally, like I had that at Bucknell two years in a row, and we won back-to-back -back championships. So I'm, I'm really hoping we can can do the same thing here. How do you feel like your expectations are? You know, you got these freshmen coming in who have a certain amount of expectations, but you come in as a graduate transfer. Do you feel like there's any kind of difference as to the way the fans might see you as opposed to the freshmen that are coming in? Yeah, I mean, I think the guys that are that are here, that are younger, they they come in as five-star recruits. They come in from Team USA, McDonald's All-Americans, and they have this big spotlight on them. And then for me, that I'm coming in with a little bit of a smaller spotlight, but more of like a a pressure to kind of lead and. The, the pressure for me doesn't bother me. I've I've been a leader on a team for the last two, three years, and I, I think that I did a pretty good job of doing that at Bucknell. And I think for me, the, the, the spotlight is a little bit smaller, but uh, I'm trying my best to, to keep these guys in, on like the right path and kind of get to where we want to get to. For some of these guys, it's their first time being away up from home mm -hmm. all the time. Do you think you'll be able to help them whether it be shaving or how to spend their money, you think you'll be able to step in and kind of help them with that stuff? Well, clearly I don't shave, so uh, <laughs> no. I mean, I think I think with a lot of the guys, it's I've, I've, when I moved in, I moved in by myself, and these guys had their families yeah. and aunts, uncles, grandparents, and it was, it was kind of a joke when I got here that I was just like, oh, I moved in and I was good to go. <laughs> but honestly, if, whatever they need from me and if they need to go get something to eat or they want to just like talk or they want to FaceTime their families or they just want to get away from campus, we're like, that's what I'm here for outside of basketball. And that's what I'm trying to do for these guys. And I know Keon, Johnny, and I go and eat all the time together. And we like, Johnny and I went to Kroger the other day and just walked around and got some groceries and just like stuff like that. Building that smaller relationship yeah. outside of it really translates onto the court. Any crazy BBN stories yet? No, no, not nothing yet. Just Big Blue Man. The the camp out itself is yeah. is absurd. But no, it, nothing nothing crazy yet. Emmanuel said you uh, you're the kind of teammate that'll cook a guy breakfast. I did cook Emmanuel breakfast the other. It was it was lunch. Uh, I cooked him uh, shrimp and broccoli. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, is that your specialty? Or? Oh, no, I mean, I went over, I woke up early in the morning and I went over to uh, to cook breakfast for myself at Nutter and uh, I had seen Emmanuel walking over to get um, get some shots up in the morning and I was like, hey, do you want anything from, from Nutter? And he was like, yeah, could you do shrimp and broccoli? And I was like, yeah, I got you. I didn't think anything of it. And then like I brought it back and he's like, he's like, that's like, that's a great teammate. And I was just like, dude, like, if I'm over there, I can do it for you. I, I yeah, would, he said you're the best teammate he's ever had. <laughs> I'm trying, that's, that's what I try to do everywhere I go. I try to be that guy for everybody. So food is clearly the way to Emmanuel's home. <laughs> it is. The dude eats all the time, and he loves uh, he loves Chinese food. So I'm trying my best to kind of cook that for him. So what's the difference between you know you played against some good people, mm -hmm. but what's the difference playing against this level of people every day? Uh, just you have to be ready to go like every day. And we had practice on the weekends, and they're hard. You fight every for every minute of, of practice and I think for, for me I just was like I had to mentally prepare myself like a week in advance it's like listen like practices are going to be hard they're going to be long and but like you've done this and I think that that's something that I, I've kind of carried over into what I've been doing and um, but just you have to be ready to go at all times and like you have to be like even if you're on the sideline catching a break like you don't know what could happen guy gets tired or something like you got to be ready to go in, and I think that that's something that I've been trying to do, and I've been trying to keep with the guys that have been with me on the sidelines or guys that have been playing. Like, just be ready to go always. Are there things? Because Reed went through the exact. They made him bulk up at Stanford. Yeah, I talked to him uh, actually the other day about it, and I just asked him. Like, I asked him how he was doing over in uh, over in Germany, and um, and he asked me how everything was going here, and he was like, the progress picture is awesome. He's yeah. like, it's it's really crazy to see how he kind of went through the same thing when mm -hmm. he came here. He got here and kind of cut up and. Uh, you just said like keep keep with it, otherwise it'll it'll be a really long year. How, How did it you... happen in terms of what's different about the diet system here versus where you were, or the weights, or what what's different that made that happen? Uh, I, we didn't have a, the, the sports nutrition like kitchen that we have here mm -hmm. at Nutter, um, and then at Bucknell we had the cafeteria like that, that was our meal plan. We didn't have a chef or anything, um, so we didn't get to really cook our own stuff. And if we did, uh, we had to like we had to do it ourselves. And like I had an apartment, so we would cook every once in a while. But it, it just wasn't the same. Did you give up something? What's that? Did you have to give up something that you used to eat a lot at Bucknell. I did. I mean, uh, we had like... free free food. I mean, I, I would eat as much as I possibly could because we'd get out of practice late at night, and then whatever was available for us was there. We didn't. There was, really... there was nothing like dang. I haven't had a Twinkie in six months. Oh no, 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 like I didn't that? eat that stuff. Okay. How would you describe your offensive game at Bucknell compared to what count once you have? Uh. At Bucknell, it was a lot of trail, like a lot of trail work, a lot of 15 feet, and, 
in, in, and here it's more putting the ball on the floor, getting in the middle of the paint, kicking out, or getting in the middle of the paint, shooting floaters and runners. Um, obviously, being able to shoot the three helps me out, um, and I think that uh, just putting, being able to put the ball on the floor a little bit better and, and doing that a little more often than I did there and uh, hopefully have a little bit more of a back-to-basket game as well. Was this always your plan to come um, from, to go to a school like Bucknell? Obviously a great school period, yeah. but for your basketball career, was it always the plan to work yourself with the graduate transfer rules to go to a program like Kentucky, like any other major? Uh, not really. When I, when I got hurt my freshman year and Coach Davis asked me what I wanted to do, I was more worried about getting healthy and getting my shoulder right. Um, and then as time kind of progressed and I got surgery on my knee my junior year in the spring and the decision really needed to kind of get moving. And I didn't really want to go to school for another year. Um, if I'm being honest, I was just like, college is really, really hard for everybody who's gone through it. And playing a sport there is really hard and it weighs on you a lot. And I think the biggest thing for me at the end of my senior year at Bucknell, I was like, I, if I want to play professionally at the highest level that I think I can. I really need to step my game up and change my body and change how I play. And obviously, this is the best place for it. Is there, is there anything, anything that Cal sold you on that made you come to Kentucky? I mean, I think just the, the transformation of everybody's game. Um, he has guys come in and be able to, like, Carlin Towns come in just shooting threes, and now he's one of the most elite centers or power forwards in the league. So, I mean, Kenny Payne was the same way. Like, when I came here, he said, We're really going to change you and change your game. but. We're going to allow you to do your thing within our offense. When you were younger, is this is something? Was that something you dreamed of doing, or was that? Did you just want to go play basketball and go to a good school, or did you always dream to come to a major program? I mean, every kid's dream is to play high major basketball, and when you come from where I come from, you don't really get to do that. And it's not resources aren't the same. And I think for me, when I was uh, getting recruited and Bucknell offered me, I was like, that was the best offer that I had had moving out of high school. And um, I have nothing but like good things to say about the coaching staff there and the people who recruited me. And Coach Davis kept me on on board. And um, and then when I had the opportunity to really transfer and go to a bigger program, I I definitely wanted to do that. And last question. Uh